Uh, hey guys, so I'm just going to do like a quick or long video about um, the what I've learned about the state committee and the officer elections for the DPG, uh, the Democratic Party of Georgia, on 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 January 26th. And the reason why I'm, I, I want to talk about this for a minute is like to come summarize what I've been posting a bit about, um, including a list of the um, of this, the, the candidates for, uh, that have announced on Facebook, almost entirely on Facebook, like not on Twitter, not on any other social media, just Facebook, announcing that they're running for the state com uh, for the state officer elections for the DPG, uh, or for congressional uh, district chairs, or even in at least two cases, the um, and for constituency caucuses and groups like the Latinx uh, caucus. Um, the, uh, Deborah Gonzalez is running for uh, for that chairship, um, and I think she was the one who got ousted. I think by the like uh, in the last election, um, even though Democrats overall gained eleven more seats in the House. Um, and Vincent Olszewski, who's running for uh, for disability caucus and you know, for the DPG disability caucus. So we have so many candidates. Who are running for for this? And I was like, I was commenting. Um, it reminds me so much of what I've seen of the DNC winter meeting uh, from 2017, because there was a whole glut of people running for uh, various offices um, at that meeting, and it took like all day to finish that whole thing. Um, but the chairship was especially especially um, glutted with candidates. Um, oh, hey, Phyllis. Hi. How you doing? Um, and so it was my first time, by the way, like what, uh, seeing an event like that up close. I had never been to a convention. I had never been to a, um, to a DNC event of any kind until, um, that day. And it was a big event. It was a, a very, um, a very emotionally charged and pa and physically packed event. Uh, so I, when I was watching that, I was um, I was just amazed by the passion that was happening over um, who would win, and of course, but of course, it was also a bit of a proxy for uh, the deep for the uh, the lot the previous presidential elections um, between Hillary and Bernie. So in this case, it was Tom Perez, Keith Ellis, Allison, um, but it was so much so much, a bit more different compared to. Uh, to that. But anywho, um, what I'd like to talk about is the state committee and if they're going to show up, it, how many of the state committee members are going to show up to elect uh, the next chair, vice, you know, three vice chairs, secretary and treasurer of the DPG, um, especially in light of the trouble that has historically been had of getting quorum for uh, or at least a majority of the members to show up. I believe there's at least 410 members of the state committee. They're all elected from the counties and from the county committees. They're elected for four year offices. Um, although it might be slightly different if like the, a county committee was just recently formed within the last uh, four years. And now uh, they're gonna be choosing the person who's gonna lead them for lead the, the party for the next uh, four years. Um, and what I'm interested in is like the, not only the history of the party, but if the structure of the party and how it determines um, the, the sheer number of people who are who are called state committee members um, might get in the way of this election process. Um, so the 410 members, I, I, was, re I was reading, for example, about how the modern state committee of the DPG was only formed beginning around 1975 with uh, that year's charter convention. And so uh, that year, from what I've learned, and I need to do some more research about this, but um, then Governor George Busby at the 1974 quadrennial gubernatorial convention. Um, oh, hey, hey, Art, hey, Tony, hey, um, Ravion. Um, the 1975 convention was 
a watershed moment for the for the Democratic Party of Georgia because it began this transition that year of moving from a party which largely existed for the purpose of electing a governor from the county unit system, which had just been abolished about just over a decade prior, um, into a party where there's a bit more pressure going on. Um, so instead of like the governor picking who would be the chair of this congressional committee, who would be on the executive committee at the statewide level, who would be the county chair, um, that instead these would all be determined by the uh, by voters for county committee and county chair, by um, ca um, by the congressional district committee for the, the congressional district chair, and this new organization called the sub-organization called the state committee that was um, consisting of 310 members. Um, and that was implemented in the, in the first charter, first ever charter of the DPG in uh, 1975, it was September of, in late September 1975, and it will be fully implemented in, uh, in uh, November of that year. It would officially take force by the time of the 1978, by the 1976 um, uh, election in which Jimmy Carter would run um, native son of Georgia, become president. 1978 is the first time that a chair is properly, is elected by the state committee members. Um, and this was a watershed moment because it determined a large part of what the party is now. So I wonder then, if and, and and I think there's there's like something that I that I was reading um, from a newspaper clipping from newspapers.com, which would be a good resource if I didn't have to pay money or that amount of money to gain access. So I just uh, scroll through uh, through Google search results for it, and it was saying that um, that uh, Fulton. DeKalb, Cobb, some of these metro counties uh, at the time of the 1975 convention wanted to, um, to like find a slightly different way of electing the um, electing the chair of also of, cons of a, how to determine membership of the state committee, but the counties elsewhere outside of Atlanta metro objected to that because they would feel they felt that this would dilute their power, and so as a result. I think that's the reason why counties elect the chair, uh, uh, like elect the state committee, which elects the chair and other executive officers. So I think it might be a mistake because this results in a in an election pro and, and um, when it, when it comes to not just voting for officers but also electing. Um, also voting for resolutions, voting for changes to the charter and the uh, and the bylaws, um, the combined rules, if you will, of the uh, of the DPG, that when you can't get a quorum in order to uh, to like uh, vote for these processes, not a whole lot gets done. Not a whole lot gets done, and um, I think that that will, this could impact. If a, a necessary quorum doesn't show up, if enough people don't show up to the DPG, um, elect the state committee election for the officers and the congressional chairs, um, that it will look a bit bad, I mean, in terms of optics for the, for the party. Because then it says once again that we can't get enough quorum, we can't get enough people to vote for, um, and for our officers, for the people who are going to lead us for the next four years. Um, so I'm worried about that. And that's why I'm interested in, in, uh, in this idea I was thinking about, like how Texas, um, their state committee, and which I'm assuming also elects their chair and other officers, how they um, determine their membership, not by number of counties because Texas has 254 counties. Um, and we have only the second largest number of, of counties next to Texas. We have 159 counties. Um, 
if we don't it, like, if, I, I would look at Texas as a, a model, even though not the best model, because uh, Texas Democrats are not winning governorships right now. They are still in that same trap as the rest of the uh, deep, the majority of the deep south, except for maybe, I don't know, Louisiana or North Carolina, um, that they still have, a, I, I would assume that they have a more agile uh, state Democratic Executive Committee, or SDEC, if you will. Um, they have only 31 state Senate off state, state Senate districts, and so they elect um, two members from each district. That's like 112, um, or uh, no, 62. Sorry, 62 members uh, for that state committee. And I'm assuming that they are much more busy in terms of electing members, in terms of um, of electing these. Um, you know, of, I mean, of, of electing members of the executive committee, electing officers, electing other people who are supposed to lead the party as a whole. Um, and they can afford to do that because Texas is such a broad state and they cannot afford to have every one of these 254 counties electing the state committee and uh, that will determine who will be the next uh, chair or other officers. Um, so if Texas might be a better model and it's not the, the uh, like the like surefire the best model, like California ha manages to have an annual convention and 2,900 members are down on the video. Um, like 200,900 members of the, uh, di for their state committee, um, for their state committee, then but they have like a small, much smaller number of ca of uh, counties in California compared to us. Then, um, then, how can we streamline this process to accommodate the counties, but also to make sure that there's a bit more structure? You know, maybe making the Senate districts like uh, or factoring the Senate districts in more to the election into the uh, determination of the chairship of the state committees um, and giving more people things to do, I guess. I would think that's a good idea. Um, I think that would help change the party into something a bit more structured, but also maybe a bit more democratic as well. So, and, and, I, and I think that, uh, that whoever will in this alternate universe where we could have a much more streamlined state committee uh, in which the state Senate districts elect the uh, the members of the state committee, then they would be able to get more things done. They'd be able to pass more resolutions, make more endorsements, um, make do more elections, meet more often than just, you know, what is it, twice a year or so or every quarter. Um, I, I would say that they would be more flexible in an alternate universe where the state committee was um, just 56 or 112 members in total. So that's um, something I'm, I'm strongly interested in and how it's probably necessary in the near future, in the very near future, to look at calling maybe another charter convention in order to redraw the, uh, the bylaws, the, the rules of the party, and helping to determine how um, this party will be governed, how party activists will interact with each other at different levels. And I'm just talk, not just talking about county, I'm just, talk, just talking about state or congressional. I'm even talking about state senate districts, and I'm talking about um, precincts as well. And Joseph, you know, Joey was mentioning precincts and how much they, they factor into the structure of the Republican Party, the Georgia Republican Party. I want to see precincts matter uh, to the, or, or to, for precincts to be factored in as a, part, as a party structure at the most basic level for uh, the, part, you know, for the uh, DPG. Because in Texas, they use state, they use Senate district, they use congressional district, they use county, and they use precinct. I would say that we'd be benefit, we'd benefit from uh, having something similar 
because we wouldn't have to spread ourselves as much over um, or, or have to like have county committees in all 159 counties. We can at least have, if, we, if in like in a whole area like in Southeast Georgia, where we are lacking, seriously lacking in a lot of um, county committees, we could still form perhaps a state, like a like state senate districts um, for and organizations for the whole state senate district in order to organize Democrats across a few counties at a time. And I think that would maybe benefit the um, the party's outreach in those areas because there are just way too many counties in Georgia. They were unnecessarily, as as uh, uh, Susanna was was saying. Um, there were just way, way, way too many counties that were created all willy-nilly um, in Georgia from the first, from uh, the, the moment of statehood for the uh, for the state for the statehood of Georgia. So, with that in mind, I think that should that should be brought up at some point for the state committee to consider if they can't get quorum for just reforming the bylaws, maybe they need a state convention in order to like chop down the number of memberships that need to be had by counties and instead uh, switch over to another um, process. Maybe we need a new um, charter for the party. Maybe we need a new set of rules for the, uh, for the DPG um, that can modernize the party and move it further away from that heritage of being a party that existed for the benefit of kingmakers in the rural areas because that's what the Democratic Party historically had been up until the 1970s and 60s and 70s going onward. And only because this party was desegregated, this party, um, this party's, uh, that supported the county unit system from 1917 to 1962 had to find a way to move itself away from that process. And yeah. I think that we can move further away from that heritage if we were to look at how other party, you know, other parties have been able to um, to build their structures on a more grassroots level and giving a bit, a few more tiers, maybe just two more tiers for party engagement and for across uh, swath of states. So, and I think my ground froze. Um, I'm going to close this up right quick. Just close all these uh, browsers, tabs. So I'm strongly interested in this. And because I lear I've learned more about the 1975 Charter Convention, um, I feel that it will be, it'll be a good time, even though, yes, we do have a, an, an election season that's going to begin pretty much in June, um, although what is it? Uh, at least one candidate has said that they're going to announce that they are going to make a, some big announcement for it in January. No, well, on Martin Luther King Day. Of course, you know who who that person is. Um, but this is such a good time to consider the structure of the party and to make sure that this time. Even during the presidential system, the presidential uh, cycle, that's likely going to begin in earnest in June, going onward to November of next year. That, how would I say? That we still maintain a party and party engagement that goes beyond the campaigning part, because there is still, um, I would say, life beyond the campaign. And every, every time that I felt that, that like there was a time that, that something needed to be changed about the, par about the party, the campaign always got in the way. The campaign and the campaign process just got in the way all the time. And I hope it doesn't do that this time. I hope it doesn't end up where the, ca the campaign um, just overwhelms everybody's senses and overwhelms everybody's, um, all the Democratic Party activists' um, ideas 
or motivations for changing the party to make it more democratic. We cannot devote ourselves entirely to coordinated campaigning for whoever's going to be running for president and whoever's going to be running for state and for U.S. Senate from Georgia. We also have to consider that the party has not fully democratized itself, has not fully modernized itself, and that we need to change. So, anywho, um, so I guess that's what I only wanted to say. Um, oh, and that the state, um, that the officers, that the officer election, um, of course, it's taking place like uh, right after the uh, like Muskogee County, well, probably a week or two after like uh, Muskogee County has our post committee elections um, or expanding the number of members on the state committee, on the county committee from about uh, 20 or what is it, 30 something to about 54. Um, and it's really hard to find information about how this is going to go on because the DPG has not published this information. And I'm like, why? And so many people have asked, why is it that I can't find, like even some state legislators, party actors from Atlanta, they're coming to this post I wrote and they're asking, why is it that I can't find a list anywhere else of all the people who are running for these offices? And of course, that's, that's kind of par for the course for the Democratic Party of Georgia in more recent times, that it's lacking information, it's lacking um, publication, that all we're finding out about, the, about this election and about the officers is largely through shares of Facebook posts. Who's running and when, it, when and where is this election is supposed to take place? and how to like file your candidacy. I only found, by the way, the, the information for filing your affidavit um, to run and to say that, yes, I am a Democrat and I will support other Democratic candidates. I only found that um, through the ninth district, the ninth congressional district Democratic Women's Network website. It's a WordPress site. And I'm hoping it's correct because it has emails to email addresses for Rebecca DeHart, for other people who are going to be helping manage the uh, manage this process, and they that's the only place I've been able to find it. The DPG has not sent this out by mailing list. It has not published this on the website. They have. Um, I'm assuming maybe they have sent this out only to state committee members or something. But this information is also pertinent to people who are not state committee members who still want to run. And there are a few people I already know are not state committee members, but they are still running, like Joey. Uh, and people like Joey, people who are not state committee members, they need, they need this information too because they are eligible. If this is just for state committee members, then just don't include the state, like non-state committee members as a section of, the, of, of that whole article saying that yes, you can run too. Don't do that. That leaves a lot of people out in the cold. And I don't want people being left out in the cold because this is so important. This is gonna determine the leadership of this party for the next four years. It's gonna determine who is going to manage this party next year. And then in 2022, when we're gonna have our next gubernatorial election. So people need this information. This should be disseminated, what, how many weeks ago? How many weeks ago? And it hasn't. It is not on the DPG mailing list. It is not on the DPG website. It is not on the DPG social media outlets. So that needs to change so badly. It is depressing that it's it, like what Alexa was saying, that this feels more of an insider thing, even though technically it's supposed to include outsiders, uh, outside people, people who are not on the state committee, people who are not state legislators or office holders to also be able to run and file an affidavit 
and file an application to run for these officer positions. But then again, we don't, um, a lot of these county committees also don't exactly announce their uh, state committee election officer, the state committee member elections all that well either. So who is representing you in the state committee? I mean, I know at least a few people who are represent, gonna be representing us here in Missouri County in that the state committee for this election. I hope they're gonna be there, by the way. Um, I hope Val is gonna be there, like, but he's, he's cool. He, he should be able to be there. But in the meantime, that needs to be public information. That needs to be much more public information so that we can talk to our state committee members and say, hey, I would like to, for you to vote for Nick, Senator Nakima Williams for chair. I want you to vote for Daniel Blackman for chair. I want to, you to vote for Scout Smith for vice chair of, I, what is it? Um, uh, county, no, can, not candidate recruitment, uh, constituency groups. Um, I want you to vote for Arnold Martin III for, um, for first vice chair, or someone else is probably, all, like at least two other people are also running for that, Ted Terry and I forgot who else. Um, I want you to vote for Joey or Justin Holsenbeck for, uh, for secretary. So far, I believe there's only one candidate for a treasurer. So yeah, but we need to be able to like, oh, to like let, I mean, to lobby our state legislators, our, our state, I mean, state committee members in the same way that we are able to talk to our state legislators and to our Congress members. This is just as important in my honest opinion. I mean, it may not have the weight of law, but it does have the weight of determining who's gonna get on these ballots that we are gonna be voting on next year. Or even, yeah, yeah, next year and in 2022. So it's a shame that, I, I don't know, like, I don't know if, I, if anyone else besides me has published this information, I mean, a whole list of the candidates so far, it feels like I'm the only one who's done this. And I'm just out here in Muskogee County. I'm not in Atlanta. I am not connected with that Atlanta all that well. I've only been there, you know, like several times in my life, but not lived there long term. No. But yeah, I'm able to find this out only through Facebook. And that needs to change. I mean, goodness, I wish I could be a communications director for the party, for the state party as well. Um, but that needs to change. We need to be much more aware of who's going to be representing us at, at this election on the 26th. We need, we need to know who's going to be representing us in our county committees. We need who's going to be voting for who on, you know, the 26th. I mean, they may not be, they may not say, but they're going to be lobbied. And we, the people, we, the activists, we, the, the Democratic voters who campaigned and put our heart and sweat and gas and money into helping Stacey Abrams, like, um, to get so close to the finish, so close to that 50% plus one um, to win that election, so close to it, but not enough um, because of voter suppression and a bunch of other things. We have every right and a responsibility to be knowledgeable about who's going to represent us in this election. We have every right and responsibility to be aware of who's going to represent us and talk to them and say, hey, if I'm not here talking to you, I'm my, my ideas are gonna be on the menu or they're not gonna be included. And I hope we're not, we're not gonna be excluded from this process. So we cannot be excluded if we have the information and we have the means of contact for the state, let us, for the state committee members and say, hey, this is the reason why I want you to support such and such for such and such position um, for a state office or for congressional chair. So I shouldn't have to be the one doing this, but I guess I am. What else? Anywho, that's about it. Thank you. 
Um, let's talk some more in the comments.